Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. Here we go on our Breeders' Cup uh, shows. We got we got early lists of contenders for the Breeders' Cup dirt races before anybody else. Top contenders, Matt. Uh, yeah, I think the turf races with all the international horses are a little bit more fluid. So we're going to focus on the dirt races. There's seven of them on Friday and Saturday, November 1, November 2 at Del Mar. Without further ado, we're going to jump right in. We're going to start with the big one, Matt. Let's go classic. Talk classic to me, Matt. Uh, we are not we are not having the Americans as our top picks in here, I see. Yeah, we're not. And and I think there's already a little controversy with the classic. I heard that the race is going to be in the middle of the card on Saturday, I guess, for uh, uh, for television purposes. But anyway, yes, uh, uh, the I think the international influence is uh, uh, significant particularly when it has been a year uh, with the uh, three-year-olds and certainly the older horses in America where there just has not been any consistency. Yeah, uh, a lack of consistency. I don't think overall it's a weak bunch per se, especially if we're looking at the three-year-olds, uh, but uh, there doesn't seem to be one American horse that is you can – put your finger on and say, wow, he's he's going to be tough to beat on Classic Day. I think a lot of people look to fierceness as our best hope. But uh, tell me why you picked City of Troy as your top pick. Well, I guess, you know, I guess it's because of the opposite of what you were describing about the American horses. With City of Troy, you're talking about a horse that, you know, is uh, – is a very good horse and has been a very good horse and and uh, probably the best horse uh, uh, racing in Europe or certainly one of them uh, consistently. So uh, that is basically why I have City of Troy on top. I feel if he runs his good race, his best race, he's going to be very hard to beat. Yeah, and I'm I'm City of Troy is one horse who's going to have to beat me. Honestly, I, I look at him and I, I think he looks like a turf horse to me. I could be wrong. Um, he's got Justify uh, on the uh, uh, as his sire, of course, uh, but uh, also Galileo and Galileos don't also always like dirt. That's for sure. He's the broodmare sire. City of Troy, um, impressive in Europe. Only one bad race, and that was his only loss. City of Troy, uh, probably the best turf horse in the world. But uh, going against this field, I, I'm going to try to beat him. I'm going to try to beat him with Forever Young. Now, only one European turf horse has ever come over and won the Classic. And no Japanese horses have ever come over to win the Classic. So we're bucking the trend with our top picks. But I really like Forever Forever Young. The, the, the amount of good races he ran uh, before he got to the Derby, all over Asia, really, uh, is impressive, and and he's got more speed than I think we saw in that twenty horse field in the Derby. Uh, he beat Bookham Dano out a mile, Matt, and uh, that that's not easy to do, as you know. Forever Young ran a very good Derby, despite that being the the, the tough spot. Twenty horses uh, bothered, and um, I think it was the end of a long tough campaign, honestly, for Forever Young. Now he's been freshened. Return race was good. I, I think we're going to see a really good Forever Young in the Classic. Yeah, uh, certainly. And, and you know, you, you talked about, uh, you know, only one horse coming over from Europe to to, uh, to win the Classic. But with that performance by Forever Young in the Kentucky Derby, I, I think he's in a little bit of a different category. At least for me, he is. Although on the other side of it, you know, uh, I, I, I need the I need to see it. I need to see that first Japanese horse win the classic, although Japanese horses have won Breeders' Cup races. Yeah, they did it at Del Mar a couple years ago. Um, Forever Young is a dirt horse. City of Troy is a turf horse so far. We'll see how that translates with our two top contenders for the Breeders' Cup Classic. Of course, we have to talk about fierceness a little bit now. Fierceness won the Travers, what I call the race of the year, uh, in a very tight photo with uh, the Philly Torpedo Anna. Fierceness three for three at Saratoga Lifetime. 
Last year, when he went out to California, he did well. That was at Santa Anita. This is at Del Mar. Fierceness, I'm not sure a mile and a quarter is his best distance, but I, I feel pretty safe saying he's our best dirt male in the country. Yes, I agree with that, Brian. I, and, and all the credentials you listed, I think, are plenty of good reasons why. Uh, but, you know, uh, this will be uh, probably the toughest race of his career. Agreed. And uh, the other horses we have here, I, I think, are horses that I'm going to have to look at how this pace uh, scenario unfolds. It looks like National Treasure is going to the mile, the dirt mile. I think Seize the Gray will probably end up in the Classic. And if so, he's an interesting horse. Uh, I'm not sure yet how much speed there's going to be. Arthur's Ride, Fierceness, maybe Seize the Gray. Uh, I, I picked some ralliers in my fourth and fifth spots. Ushba Tesaro is a really good mile and a quarter horse, another Japanese horse, and he had a good prep recently. And Sierra Leone always fires, has done well at a mile and a quarter, just hasn't been winning. Uh, I see two horses, one the same over there for, on your list. Yeah, Ushba, you know, has won on a lot of money in his career. Last three uh, races, he has finished second, but they have been in very big races like the Dubai World Cup and the Saudi Cup. So he got to be uh, in your top list of considerations. And, the, and then I'm trying for, you know, uh, a, a little bit of a less mentioned horse, uh, a Tapa Trice, a horse with so much talent that uh, ha is maybe looking the best that he has in his career uh, recently. Yeah. And there's horses we're not mentioning here in our top five, uh, horses like Highland Falls. Possibly next, if he runs in the mile and a quarter race, I think he is a dangerous horse still. Sub Sanador, uh, Newgate, uh, ran very good races last time uh, over the, uh, actually at Santa Anita in the California Crown. Not the California Crown, the California Crown. I got it right this time. Hey, uh, interesting classic. I say Forever Young is the top one. Matt says City of Troy at this point. We'll see how that field develops in the next three weeks. Let's go to the mares, the Phillies and mares. For the distaff now, this is, uh, of course, $2 million, nine furlongs, a furlong shorter than the classic. And we agree on the top one. Yeah, we certainly do. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I think this race is uh, all about Thorpedo Anna. She is going to be one of the biggest favorites in the two-day uh, uh, Breeders' Cup. Uh, um, she's going to be very hard to beat even though, uh, you know, she's going to have to face the the top older horses, some of which we have on our lists here. Yeah, this will be our first race against older females, and, and that's never an easy thing. We've seen some great matchups of three-year-old fillies against older ones, most recently that, that, that uh, beautiful race behind, between Beholder and Songbird. Uh, several years ago. And uh, I, I agree with you. Torpedo Anna, she's won four grade ones this year. Um, I, I think she will be uh, uh, ready for this race after the cotillion. I don't think they gave her everything uh, that she had. And she had a bit of a tough trip in the cotillion. But because the cotillion was close and because Idiomatic won the spinster for fun, I don't think there's going to be a gigantic gap between the odds of the two of them. I have idiomatic number two. She's the defending champ. She's gone out to California before and did well last year's Breeders' Cup. This stuff, idiomatic is just a nice mare and she's got speed, which is always dangerous. And this probably will be a relatively short field. Yes, and it was good to see her uh, get back in the winner's circle uh, with uh, her performance in her last race. Yeah, it was a good performance. It was a, it was a race... Beautifully set up for idiomatic with with little early speed on a track she likes. Uh, Candied made a quick run at her in the spinster, but then she just pulled, drew away and won uh, easily. Matt, you have a, a different horse in number two, though. You have Raging Sea there. I do. I just uh, you know, out of respect, uh, Raging Sea is having uh, is having a fantastic year, three in a row right now. And 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 let's not forget that the uh, Raging Sea beat idiomatic. She did. We saw her in the personal ensign. I, I think that race was set up. The table was set when Idiomatic battled with Randomized early on. But Raging C has won three graded stakes in a row. Didn't seem like she was used uh, all out last time in winning the Bell Dame. I have her down at number four. 
Uh, if there's a lot of speed in this race, which I, I, I don't know will happen, Regency becomes a bigger threat, obviously. My three, your four is awesome result. And this filly has been pretty awesome. She's got speed, too. She's seven for seven over in Japan. Seven for seven in Japan. Uh, so I, I, seven good reasons for us to have her on the list. I, I have more concerns about this Japanese horse because uh, we haven't seen her run outside of her home country. That's right. And we both have a cult number five. She got up for second in the spinster. I wasn't sure who to put at number five. I think <laughs> after the top four, there is a gap in the distaff. Matt, let's switch gears and go short. Let's go to the sprint, which is six furlongs. And I'm a little surprised we both have the same exacta in here. Although I will be honest, this is a work in progress for me. I, I want to see a little bit more of how this field shakes out. It looks like there's going to be a lot of speed. But we both have Mulliken, who we were impressed with when we saw him up close in the forego. Well, Brian, this has been a division that, you know, uh, has no really hasn't had any consistent leader there have been except for a couple horses uh, uh they really haven't been able to put together uh victories but mulliken uh has been able to do that uh he is four for four this year including his last two in the forego and the neighborhood yeah i guess what we did was we picked the two most consistent horses mulliken yeah. has moved forward uh, with uh, uh, his career as, a, as an older horse now for uh, Rudolph Brissett. Uh, four for four this year, getting more impressive. His two graded stakes at Aqueduct and Saratoga in the last two, very impressive, decisive, but this will certainly be a tougher field than he's faced yet. The Chosen Braun, obviously very consistent as well, Matt. 19 to 24 lifetime. Uh, five for five this year until he got beat. Narrowly uh, in, in the seven furlong Bing Crosby, which is over the, or sorry, the Pat O'Brien, which yeah. is over the track at Del Mar, where Raging Torrent came back and beat him. Yeah, and, and right, we're talking about consistency before that Pat O'Brien, uh, uh, Chosen Verone, going back to last year, had won seven races in a row. And, and you know, just you got to have tons of respect for this horse. Uh, uh, never runs a bad race. And I expect that will be true in uh, uh, Breeders' Cup also. Yeah, he's a Californian. He's a Southern Californian. He's uh, put together a great career. He's was disrespected, I think, a little bit because he's a state bred. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, he's proven his class over the last couple of years. And uh, the Chosen Front, probably a deserving favorite in the Breeders' Cup Sprint. The horse that beat him was Raging Torrent. We both have him down at four. Raging Torrent is a three-year-old coming on for trainer Doug O'Neill. And he was game in that win in the Pat O'Brien. I have another three-year-old in my number three spot because I think Prince of Monaco ran two really good races in his two only two races of the year when he was second in, in two grade ones at Saratoga to Bookham Dano and to domestic product. Uh, Prince of Monaco is one at Del Mar. I think he's a dangerous horse, especially if there's a lot of speed, which it looks like there could be, including your number three, Straight No Chaser. Yep, Straight No Chaser, a uh, 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 California-based sprinter. You know, I, I like to include them, particularly when they are running in one of their home tracks uh, at Del Mar this year, a uh, recent winner of the Santa Anita Sprint Championship. Yeah, Straight No Chaser is a talented sprinter. We've seen him on the East Coast as well. We've seen him run big races, a little inconsistent, a little in and out with both his races and his performances. But when he's on, he's very dangerous. We also expect Skelly in the field, who's got a ton of speed as well. So this could be a fast pace developing in the six furlong, $2 million sprint. Uh, I went with uh, a Japanese horse in my number five spot. You went with a horse that sounds Japanese in your five spot, Matt. Nakatomi has run well in the Breeders' Cup sprint before. Yeah, and, and has run well this year. Last time he was second in the Phoenix and won the Vanderbilt uh, this year for trainer Wesley Ward. Yeah, he, he's he's always a dangerous horse. Last time he was uh, uh, uh Beaten by a speed bias, I think, at Keeneland. Maybe didn't run his absolute best, but he should be uh, ready for another try in the Breeders' Cup Sprint. I went with Remake as my number five. He's a classy five-year-old Japanese that's run all over the world and uh, 
uh, looks better than ever this year. And I think Remake, another one of these Japan Japanese horses that can run big in the uh, uh, Breeders' Cup and, and him in the sprint. Let's go to the Dirt Mile, which I think is setting up maybe, Matt, as one of the most interesting races. We don't know for sure exactly what the field's going to look like. Seize the Gray and National Treasure especially are two horses that um, – are important to talk about when we talk about the dirt mile. Like I said, I have a feeling Seize the Gray will run in the classic, but it seems like National Treasure is going to go after this dirt mile again. And he ran a big race last year. Yeah. And then I think it's important to note that uh, in the Breeders' Cup at Del Mar this year, that the, the uh, dirt mile will be around two turns. Yeah, it will be two turns. And I don't think that hurts National Treasure when he gets to the lead. He's very difficult. And we saw that again, despite losing, but a very good performance in the nine furlong California crown last time. He's our number two or number three. However, neither one of us picked him number one. You went with the three-year-old domestic product. I did. Uh, uh, trained by uh, trained by Chad Brown. Uh, um, and I don't know, Brian, if there's any trainer that has won more Breeders' Cup races in a relatively short and young career as a trainer than, uh, than Chad Brown, uh, a domestic uh, product, winner last time of the Jerkins, but before that was a winner of the uh, Dwyer. Yeah, domestic product is an interesting horse because he likes to rally at one turn and uh, – uh, this one is going to be two turns, so I, I'm I'm not sure if domestic product is quite as good as some of these older horses, but certainly someone to watch out for. I'm going to answer your question, by the way. I think uh, the record of D. Wayne Lucas back in the 80s would outdo uh, Brown's first 10 or 15 years of the British Cup. But anyway, that's beside the point. You have a, a, another horse that I don't even have on my list at number two, but you got to respect Saudi Crown. Yeah, and if you're talking about trainers, once again, who have won a lot of Breeders' Cup races in a short amount of time, Brad Cox is another one of them. Yeah, I get it. It's, it's hard to match the kind of things that uh, the coach, Wayne Lucas, did uh, uh, back in the 80s and 90s, but these are the guys that are winning a lot of Breeders' Cup races, and for me, that is an important consideration. Saudi Crown has done... Uh, has done good things in the past, came back from a layoff after his trip to uh, uh, Saudi Cup and had a useful victory in preparation. Yeah, I think that was out in West Virginia, wasn't it? Uh, Saudi Crown, uh, another one of these horses, another one of these horses that make this race really interesting. I, like I said, it's one of the more interesting races of the whole Breeders' Cup, I, I believe. And, and another interesting horse for me is Post Time. Son of Frost at post time has looked good when he stepped up in class in New York this year. I mean, won all those races in Maryland uh, for trainer Brittany Russell, ridden by her husband, Sheldon Russell, but uh, won the Carter, uh, second in the Met Mile, third in the Whitney. He got a um, confidence builder after a couple losses at Saratoga, but a couple of good performance losses. And uh, he won the Polynesian at Laurel by, I don't know how many lengths, 15 lengths, something crazy. Post time was uh, too good for him there. I think that'll set him up well for a good run in the dirt mile. And I think he's another horse who can come from a little bit off the pace. Domestic product there for me, Mufasa is a horse we haven't talked about yet. You have him at four. I have him at one, Matt. The South American has been really impressive since he's come over. I've been watching this horse since he's come over. A uh, very good record down in South America, and uh, uh, he's improved with every race. And that's hard to say because two starts ago, he broke 120 for seven furlongs at Colonial Downs. He he did 119 and change there in winning at Colonial Downs. Then he come, comes up to New York and he won the Vosburg like a very good horse. Mufasa's experience in South America, interested, interestingly, was more at a mile and, and nine furlongs. So I, I think the fact that he's so sharp at seven furlongs here, but really is experienced at this distance and these turns, I think Mufasa is, well, he's the horse I like best right now. Yeah, it's certainly an interesting horse. And and what you're describing in the Dirt Mile as an interesting race. I've always found the Dirt Mile to be an interesting race, although there are many uh, uh, supposed uh, racing experts who are quick to malign the race. 
Yeah, I, I think it's becoming an important race because a mile on the dirt is becoming more and more important in America. And now you're seeing a field where I think we're going to have eight or nine potential good horse winners here in the dirt mile. So I, I like the dirt mile. I'm glad it's still around. I also think Stronghold, another three-year-old, is a horse you to watch out for. He was wide every step of the way in the Pennsylvania Derby when Seize the Great beat him. I think a mile is a good distance, actually, for Stronghold, and he is a consistent horse. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. And and I feel like uh, uh, for my fifth choice in the category, Seize the Gray, that a mile is a really good distance also. Although, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Lucas uh, goes in the Classic. But I'd like yes. to see him. I, 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 I like him a lot if he goes in the Dirt Mile. Yeah, he, he is a dangerous horse. Uh, I, I think he's even dangerous in the Classic a little bit. Um, 7 million versus 2 million, D. Wayne Lucas, the swashbuckler, although his ownership outvoted him uh, not running in the Travers waiting for the Pennsylvania Derby, and it worked out. So we'll see what happens with Seize the Gray in either the Classic or the Derby. The Speedy Gray uh, looks physically really good of late, and of course he's won the Preakness and the Pennsylvania Derby. Uh, next race on the list is the last dirt race of the – not time-wise, but the last one we're going to look at on Saturday, it's the Philly and Mare Sprint, Matt. And, and I think this is shaping up to be an interesting field, too. I think Ways and Means, the horse you have as your top contender, will end up the favorite. Uh, nice record coming off a couple of graded uh, stakes wins in New York, trainer Chad Brown. Um, but again, this is a race where I see a lot of potential winners. Yep, coming into his own, into her own for sure, ways and means with three wins uh, in her last three starts, including the Gallant Bloom, the Test, and an allowance race. Uh, of course, this is a race that uh, Chad Brown won uh, a few years ago with uh, Wavell Avenue. Yeah, yeah, uh, he's had some good. Um... He's had some good older sprinter, female sprinters for sure. Not just that one. And Ways and Means is another one. She was no match for Thurpedo Anna going two turns in the nine furlong Kentucky Oaks. But since she's shortened up a little bit, she has proven to be a big talent and uh, certainly a big shot in here. Uh, I also think Society has a big shot. And she's actually the one I decided to put number one on my list because when Society runs her race, she can run horses off their feet. And uh, we saw it at Saratoga in the Ballerina where she just dazzled that day. All speed, a lot of talent. Come and get me, says Society. Yep, uh, trained by Steve Asmussen. Uh, Society is a daughter of Gunrunner, who, of course, won the classic at Del Mar. At Del Mar, there you go. Sweet Azteca is the local horse, the Southern California. In fact, the only one of the top five on either of our lists. We have the same five on both lists, actually. But Sweet Azteca was uh, an impressive winning streak this year four impressive wins in a row including beating adair manor out a mile in the beholder mile the grade one beholder mile but last time she didn't quite fire got beat i think her odds will reflect that a little bit i, I thought she was going to be the favorite uh before her last race where she was uh, a disappointing second yeah and, and you know uh, horses are allowed to lose every once in a while i think uh, the connections would rather that have happened when it happened than in the uh than in the breeders cup and beating a dare manor brian as you mentioned it's been no easy thing to do yeah sweet azteca is a real talent and and i certainly will not discount her and matt makes a great point horses uh they're not machines they don't run the same speed figure and, and even speed figures are very subjective but i'm going down a, a different rabbit hole here matt uh sweet azteca is a real talent don't let the last race fool you because i think she's better than that and i think we'll see better from sweet azteca in the breeders cup distat uh the other two horses we both have in the four and five spots in different spots i guess vava and Silla. uh they ran second and third respectively, behind Society in the Ballerina, seven furlongs in Saratoga. Society got out there and neither one really could touch her. Vava, though, had been coming in in really good form, and uh, she likes seven furlongs. Yeah, uh, Vava, another uh, another gun runner, 
for uh, this one for trainer Sherry DeVoe, who is doing great things since going out on her own. Scylla is for Bill Mott. Hey, why not? I think Bill Mott uh, has won this uh, Philly and Mare sprint the last two years. Yeah, Bill Mott is, is tough. Scylla is tough. Scylla tried uh, two turns. And uh, I guess there's a chance she could still end up in the distaff, but I think this is the spot Mott wants her in. She ran a good race, went second in the ballerina. She ran a good race before that, went second to Adair Manor in the Clement Hirsch. Scylla, a very talented, a very well-bred mare who, who will certainly be one of the ones to think about in the Philly and Air Sprint. All right, so those are the five from Saturday. Let's get to the two-year-olds, because there's two big dirt races for two-year-olds on Friday. We'll start with the males. Who do you have at number one, Matt? I've got Chancer McPatrick, uh, who uh, uh, has now won all three starts. And and these days, Brian, uh, you know, when look, taking a look and handicapping these juvenile races, it's a lot harder than it used to be, in my opinion, because they have such such they have run in so few races and, and Chancellor McPatrick seems like a big uh, veteran in this race with three starts, uh, three wins and uh, very impressive victories uh, uh, in the last, last two starts. Uh, two turns is going to be uh, a good thing for this uh, late closer and, and boy, can he make up ground fast. Yeah, I, I guess I can't disagree with you that he should be good at two turns, but he hasn't done it yet, and he hasn't run in California yet, which a lot of the horses we're talking about is true for. Uh, I think he'll be the favorite, and, and I think he's the horse to beat off nice main win, Saratoga, a, a nice hopeful win, and a nice champagne. He's done it the same way, and all three just come from the clouds and, and roll down the stretch. Uh, Chancellor McPatrick, a hot Young, first crop sire. McKinsey is his sire. We're going to talk about McKinsey a little bit more here, too. Um, probably the horse to beat here. But uh, I, I'm looking at the Ohio bred, Matt. Uh, maybe I like him more because he is on Ohio bred. But Jonathan Sway has really impressed me with his diversity in his two starts. Chancer McPatrick did the same thing in three races in New York. Jonathan Sway broke really bad in his maiden and still won his debut at Saratoga for fun. And then at Churchill Downs going a mile, it was a one-turn mile, but it was a mile uh, in the Iroquois. He faced a very talented horse uh, named Owen Almighty, who I think easily could have been on this list as well. And Jonathan Sway ran him off his feet, and uh, that was impressive going a mile. So I, I, something about that Ohio bred I really like, a son of Mac Vacoma. Yeah, you got to respect. Uh, I got to like an Ohio bred in the race. It doesn't happen very very often and, and unlike a certain political candidate i like ohio i'm not gonna malign an ohio bread all right there you go matt uh, no more politics here on horse center please uh i i did say i think chancellor mcpatrick will be the favorite uh the horse i think that probably will be closest to him although there are a bunch to bet in here is probably east avenue and east avenue is a go dolphin homebred uh, of course, we've seen so many good Go Dolphin homebreds over the last few decades. Uh, this might be another one. Won his debut at Ellis Park for fun and then really did it easily in winning the Breeders' Futurity. Uh, I saw him there on Saturday at Keeneland. It was a very, very speed favoring track. And I think the second place horse did everything wrong. Ferocious um, uh, was acting up before the start was bumped and then and, and then bounced off the rail but still east avenue got the lead and there was no catching him right and and he has done what you mentioned already with that victory around two turns yeah east avenue has a two-turn win that that is something to think about tip top thomas doesn't he's only had two uh one turn races but i'm very impressed with tip top thomas i know Chancer mcpatrick uh blew his doors off late in the champagne but tip top thomas is a game horse i thought that maiden win at saratoga was really impressive how well he fought the entire stretch at saratoga and then in the champagne and until late he was very game against the the, the oncoming rush of chancellor mcpatrick after chasing fast fractions in the champagne i think tip top thomas is a nice horse who will be close to the lead early and i think he's dangerous in, in the breeders cup juvenile 
I agree, Brian, uh, trained by Todd Pletcher, who has won this juvenile a uh, number of times. I think uh, 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 specifically that, you know, uh, may have been in the last two runnings of the uh, juvenile with fierceness and, and, and forte. Uh, yeah. And, and tip top Thomas uh, is the only horse from that fast pace in the champagne that was around competing at the end. The other ones finished far back. Yeah, that, that's probably what impressed me the most. Baffert will have some uh, good horses in here. Uh, Citizen Bull just won the American Pharaoh. Gaming, though, is the one that we both had on our list. I think gaming's got to get a lot of money. Both of his wins are at Del Mar. Uh, both of his wins look good. Son of game winner um, won the Del Mar Futurity last time. And all the horses that were uh, involved in the American Pharaoh were the horses that Gaming had just beaten at Del Mar in the seven furlong Del Mar Futurity. Yeah, and I think his sire was a winner at uh, Del Mar also. Yeah, Gaming, uh, Gaming, you can't throw him out. Citizen Bull, we mentioned Owen Almighty, Ferocious. Uh, looks like a pretty nice field for the juvenile. And uh, I might get some odds on this Ohio bread <laughs> in the juvenile. Uh, last race that we're going to talk about, the seventh dirt race, Matt. Juvenile Phillies, let's do it. Oh, we have different number ones here. I, I, Scottish Lassie ran in a key race at Saratoga. Uh, she came up short that day, uh, but there was buzz about her, and boy, did she show it in the first set. Yeah, she did. Uh, boy, uh, and again, talk about a field in the Frisette that was very wide open. Uh, horses that had run very little heading into the Grade One, and 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 Scottish Lassie was one of them. Won this uh, Frisette as a maiden, giving trainer Jorge Abreu his first graded stakes win in his career. But uh, I think last year he just missed winning a Breeders' Cup race. Yeah, I, Jody's Pride was close last year in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies, and I think I'm, Scottish Lassie is better. I'm impressed with Scottish Lassie. Uh, I better in the Frisette, and uh, it, just a big performance, the best performance by a two-year-old filly I've seen this year. She's number one on my list right now. Your number one, though, is immersive, and it's hard to knock her. Yeah, it is. I talked about Brad Cox earlier in the show, so the Brad Cox uh, factor is in full uh, force with immersive three for three in his career with two grade ones already, and and that's hard to say with for any of these juveniles. Yeah, and she did it at two turns. Again, that that Keeneland track was biased for front runners, so I think she had the. Uh, uh, the trip in the Alcibiades, but uh, a, a good performance by Immersive there. Another Go Dolphin homebred that we talked about a little bit too. Uh, Non-compliant is your number three, my number five. Two for two for Baffert. Tis the law, another hot juvenile sire. Um, nothing wrong, but I wasn't overly impressed with her Oak Leaf win. Yeah, uh, I, I will admit it got harder to find horses to put on the list for me after the uh, after the top two won the Oak Leaf and did break her uh, maiden at Del Mar. Yes, yeah, she's uh, run at Del Mar. She's run uh, a little bit longer than some of the others. Non-compliant, certainly someone to watch in here. Uh, we both have Quick Kick at number four. And I tell you what, Quick Kick beat um uh scottish lassie in scottish lassie's debut it was quick kick second race uh that that's a key race uh because the the, the second and third horses out of that maiden race saratoga came back to run one two in the frisette quick kick i think is a very talented filly uh daughter of mckinsey again there's another mckinsey for you and quick kick faced that bias at keeneland and she ran a good race when second behind immersive yeah, absolutely. Uh, and for trainer Tom Amos, uh, uh, who is a popular trainer who does uh, who can win big races. So, yeah, I, I think uh, Quick Kick is an interesting horse that will, uh, you know, probably have good odds. How important was that bias at Keeneland? Uh, speed, speed, speed at Keeneland. So Quick Kick uh, to be uh, in the picture there. And that race at Keelan was a very good performance. You abstained from number five. Uh, I think American Bikini is one you got to watch. Another Japanese horse. American Bikini, a very impressive winner of her last two starts. 
Uh, she beat Colts at about seven furlongs last time. It would look like a very good race. She's got a good uh, turn of speed, daughter of American Pharaoh coming from Japan. Watch out for her in the juvenile Phillies. Matt, that's it. Seven races. Good job, my friend. Can I get a parting shot from you? Yeah, we cru we cruise through seven races, uh, which you got to do when you're preparing for uh, the 14 races of the uh, uh, Breeders' Cup. We'll see you next week. I assume we'll be talking more Breeders' Cup. <laughs> Absolutely, Matt. We'll be talking more Breeders' Cup. And uh, yeah, I, I hope we did a good job of talking about a lot of the top contenders. That's That was our goal here with this show for all of the main track races at Del Mar. Uh, uh, in a little over three weeks now, we're getting close. Uh, as always, folks, we appreciate you watching the show. If you haven't uh, subscribed to our YouTube channel at Horse Racing Nation, go ahead and do that now for us. Turn on your notifications. Leave us a thumbs up. We like the thumbs up. Leave us a comment. Even if you want to tell us we're all wet like some of you like to do. That's okay. We, we don't mind. Uh, we will be back right here next week on Horse Center. And as Matt said, we're talking. What are we talking, Matt? Breeders' Cup, Breeders' Cup. Yeah, we're talking Breeders' Cup. We'll see you then. Until then, good luck. Have a good weekend.